have you here. All right, perfect. If you haven't attended a Michael's class before, our great moderator just put in the chat all of the technical technical information you need to know about this class. So make sure that you scan over it. Um, and that can give you a lot of good information about this class. Um, we're so excited that you're here. We are tie-dye freaks and we're excited to take it into the next season, take it into fall. So tell us where you're from and say hello and what you're making right now. Um, and we'll introduce ourselves. So my name is Liz and this is my sister, Sam. And we are creators over at prettylifegirls.com. You can follow us on all social media platforms at Pretty Life Girls. And we love um, tie-dye. We use tulip color with almost all of our projects. We even published a book last year called The DIY Guide to Tie-Dye Style. You can find it on our website, prettylifegirls.com or on Amazon. And it has everything you need to get started with tie-dye and projects from beginner to intermediate to a little bit more expert. So it's a fun place to start. Look, we have someone from Saratoga Springs, New York. Oh my gosh, that's so funny. I live in Saratoga Springs, Utah. Wow. How funny that always, I have always wanted to go to Saratoga Springs, New York, because it's a bigger city than my city. So when I Google something, Saratoga Springs, it always takes me to the New York list. Yeah. And I want to go there. Yeah. Because it has, seems like it has so much good stuff. Yeah. Hi from Maryland. The islands of South Carolina. Oh, like, like that Outer South? Banks. Isn't that North Carolina? Oh, I don't know. Is Outer Banks, North Carolina, Lydia. I, I think it, it is. is. Oh, Austin. <gasps> Hi from Austin. How cool you the, guys. Oh, Welcome. Maybell. Our website is prettylifegirls.com. And if you go there, there's a shop button and you can click on it and you can get the book there. Um, okay. Maryland, St. Louis, Oregon. Oh, great. You guys, thank you for joining us. Um, a couple things that we'll cover before we start is um, what you doing? I want to make this the view, but I don't oh, know. Oh, let's see. <laughs> Let me do this. Gallery? No. Stand by. I don't know why it's doing that. That's okay. Um, oh, pin. There Perfect. we go. Okay. So um, this class will be recorded and we'll be ready in like a day or two. And we send out a follow-up email once that recording is available and it will have a link to that. It will have a link to any of the products we talk about, any helpful tutorials that we might mention. Um, to get that email, I'm gonna drop a link in the chat, this Flowdesk link. If you go there and enter your name and email, you'll get put on the list to get that follow-up email with all the information. And you'll also be entered to win a prize pack from Tulip and they send really good stuff. Yeah. Like it's like a good pack yeah. of tie dye. And um, so make sure you do that. The project we're doing today is different from what was pictured. What was on the picture was an ice dye fall sweatshirt. And we will send out the link to that project in the follow-up email in case that's what you came here to make. Um, we are doing a fall project. People think tie-dye is for summer. We think it's year-round. Yes. So you can see, well, we'll lift it up for now. We're making this sweatsuit. It's like a kind of like a cropped sweatshirt and sweatpants with this fun pop of color. Um, this was a sweatsuit this color, and then we added the dye over it to make it a little bit darker and moodier for moody. fall. For fall. Okay, so let's see. <clears throat> Angeli, can you click on that link right above where you change or where you typed? and put your email in there. Um, let's see, is your website free? So we have a blog that shares tutorials for free. And then we have a shop where you can buy some stuff. But there are tons of tie-dye tutorials on our blog with Jess this free. Yeah. And Kathy thinks our sweatsuit looks cool. Thank you, Kathy. Thanks, Kathy. We think so. 
Um, okay. Does anyone have questions before we get started on this? We get really excited because we love tie dye and we, um, it's a runaway train. Yeah. We talk fast. We talk loud. Hi from Molly and Debbie. Hi, Hi guys. Happy to be here. Great. Okay. So ask questions as we go. We will keep an eye on the chat. And oh, okay. Lydia said we're the sea islands between S A V and C H S. Okay. Do you have, I don't know about those, but um, no. Liz used to live in New York. And I did go on to the, the East Outer Coast Banks once. And so she's more familiar with yes. all of that. Okay. Um, is it for beginners for tie dye? Yes. I don't know if you're asking about the book or the oh. website, yeah. but you can find lots of beginner or the project that we're doing today in both. <laughs> yeah. And today's project, I would classify as a beginner project yeah. also. Yeah. Yeah. We like to keep things simple mm -hmm. because easy. <laughs> and also we like a simple tie dye. Yeah. She's asking about everything. Yes. Everything. Yes, it's all. We got it all. Beginners can go to the blog. Experts can go to the blog. Beginners can get the book. Experts can get the book. There's something for everyone. Okay. Sherry, Cheryl. I can't tell. I need glasses, I think. The website is prettylifegirls.com. If you want to see that fall ice dye sweatshirt, that was the picture on the Michaels class website. It was like orange and green and brown. Yeah. If you go to prettylifegirls.com, prettylifegirls.com, type in the search fall ice dye, it will come up. And again, if you enter your email in that Flowdesk link that I shared up there a little bit, I can drop it one more time. We will send that tutorial out. Okay. Okay. Let's do it. Any other last questions? Oh, Jackie shared it. Thank you, Thanks, Jackie. Jackie. Jackie's from Tulip, the tie dye brand, and she's the best. And she just dropped that link so that you can save it for later and make one. But for now, we're going to do this one. Okay. okay. So we got this sweatsuit from a teeny bopper store. Liz is, <laughs> Liz is little, if you can tell. And so like a crop so sweatshirt cute. fits her better. And so we got this cute one in like this mustardy greenish, like what would you even call this color? Mm. It's like something between olive and mustard. Yeah. I don't know what you would call yeah. it. Yeah. And then we added the tie dye to the top and bottom. And then we added this fun pop of color that we're really excited about. So when you are doing tie dye, it's important to pay attention to the fabric that you're using. That is like a basic. Yeah, Nicole, it does look kind of army. Army, yeah. It's a little bit orangey though, like a little tinted. I don't know. Maybe their colors are different than ours. Yeah, too. it could be. Mm -hmm. Okay, anywho. With tie-dye, tulip tie-dye specifically, the more cotton you can have, the better. So tie-dye will bind to natural fibers, silk, cotton, etc. If you're using uh, polyester or rayon, your results will be mixed. It might not be as bold. Mm -hmm. This sweatsuit we're using actually is like a 50-50 or like a 60-40 blend. So, um, you can do that. Yeah. But if you want really bold, crisp colors, a hundred percent cotton last year, um, Michael's had Gildan sweatshirts. I haven't checked to see if they have them again this year yeah, that know. were a hundred percent cotton. And those are great. Um, they're a great like surface for this because they'll just suck that color up. Mm -hmm. Um, they're also really great for reverse dyeing using bleach to remove color, you know, so you could check and see that they for sure have the gilded t-shirts that are hundred percent cotton, but they may have the sweatshirts again this year. Yeah, they may. I mean, I know you can get them on the website. Yes. Yes. So just really pay attention to your, um, your fabric makeup before you jump into your project so that you get the results that you're wanting. Yeah. And hundred percent cotton is always a good option if you're adding color. So one of the reasons we love tulip why don't you tell them about Tulip? Okay. 
So lots of the time when you're using tie dye and what really intimidates people is that it requires e either a pre um, wash, a pre soak, like a soaking or a, like a soda ash or a, fix a fixative afterwards, whatever. Um, the great thing about tulip tie dye is it is one step. So what that means is the fixative, um, the soda ash, and the dye is already in the powder that comes in these bottles that when you get a, a kit from Tulip, all you have to do is add water and shake it up. And that's it. There's no pre-treatment uh, and there's no post-treatment. And every single time the colors are vibrant and they hang on to your fabrics as long as, like we said, you paid attention to your fabric makeups. They don't work on synthetics, um, like full synthetic um fabrics they would like i it depends on the fabric yeah they might work but they would wash out they'll fade right you can't guarantee the results that's right the synthetic. Yes. right so this is great for kids all the way up to adults you can do so many different methods of tie-dye with this layer them um do ice dyeing um do shibori binding all different kinds of methods all with this simple, um, this simple kit that come for Tulip. You can make it look really complex, but it's really, really super easy. Super easy. Kathy, if I, if we don't remember to talk about reverse dyeing, will you just drop that in the chat again yes, toward the to end when it. we're like wrapping up? Yes. Um, okay. So let's pull our handy tie-dye bin uh, up here. Oh, we can switch to the overhead now. Thank you, Maria. Okay. So we just have like this giant Tupperware bin and some baking racks that we like to use. Maybe we're just going to switch this. We'll just do that. Yeah, that's great. Um, this keeps it raised off of the bottom so it doesn't sit in a ton of dye. In this case, with this project, that's not a huge deal. We're no. not going to saturate it that much, but it does help you to have a little more control. So, um, mm, we're not going to use them. Okay. I'm just going to be careful because I don't want to put a ton of dye on these anyway. Okay. So with this project, we're going to do a basic spiral. Talk about it being wet. Binding. First. Okay. Yeah. Our sweatsuit is damp. That makes the dye move through it a little more freely. You can dye dry, but Sometimes you'll see the dye will like sit on top of the fabric for a while before it's absorbed. The water helps it to be absorbed and move through. If you're going to do a dry dye, you want to for sure wash your fabric first so that you get any sizing or what do we say? Coating, any kind coating. of coating that might be on your clothes. Yes. Yeah, so you want to for sure do that if you're doing dry, but we're going to do this is damp. Mm -hmm. If you want to do a different binding technique, you're welcome to do that. In yes. our book, we cover, I think, 10. Let me show you. 10 different basic so techniques. For, for our, if you've never tie dyed, we talk about the dyes and supplies you need, the kind, we have a guide for fabrics, for the different kind of fabrics, for different kind of um, dyes. We talk about preparing your fabrics for dyeing, um, setting your dye, and then we have a bunch of different binding techniques um, that show that give you a bunch of different kinds of results. So you can test them out and get all these different designs and patterns. Okay, so let's actually scoop this over for a second. Okay. I'm gonna lay our sweatshirt out flat. Oh, okay, gotta make sure we don't bump this camera. Okay, so I'm just laying this out flat. And then to get the spiral, what I'm gonna do is just pinch where I want the middle of the spiral to be. So I'm gonna do it right in the center. But if you wanted, if you visualize this and you wanted it to spiral out like this, then you can pinch it and spiral there. You can do it down here so it kind of comes out like this wherever you want it to be. For this one, we just did it right in the middle. So it's a little trickier with the sweatshirt because you got to pinch through. So you're getting the front and the back and it's kind of heavy. Yeah. Sweat. Yeah. So um, you're going to pinch it and twist it. 
and you're going to twist it all the way around and you can kind of like bundle it as you go in your hood around so twist and twist this really is like a workout and then yeah if with these ones you can just kind of like bring them around the sleeves and the hood and you can see it kind of turning into a spirally bundle like that okay and then is this a two two person job finding it do i need to help you <laughs> i think i'm okay right <laughs> now i'm a little afraid of these rubber bands breaking on this because it's big okay so then to secure it we're gonna see if we can stretch there are bigger rubber bands <laughs> too that you can use okay you did it. got it okay <laughs> i'm gonna do one there and one here just to help keep it together. Yeah, so Pre-stretch this a little. Okay. Okay. So we've got this here. Um, okay. So we've got our thing right here, ready to go. And we're going to move it over into our container. And then we're going to do the same thing with the pants. Can you scoot this back? Oh, sorry. You're fine. <laughs> distracted let's see okay so melissa with, i'm yeah. sorry about that when when um michaels asks us for photos for the projects we usually it's way ahead of when we've made the project so we give a stock photo and then we choose later what the project will be but like if you missed before we had the full tutorial for the image that's on the michaels website um on our blog and we'll send that out to you just go ahead and put your email in that link that we shared and we'll get it to you and then if you need help with it or anything we're happy to help you You can just send us a dm yep jackie shared the link just up a few messages where you can see so you still get that this is actually like a two for one <laughs> there you okay. go so for the pants i did i wanted the spiral to be here with pants you kind of want to think about like you don't yeah. really want it. Your spiral right in the <laughs> yeah. center. So we're gonna do it from I wouldn't have side. thought about that. That was smart yeah. of you to think about. So um we're gonna pinch it here and we're just gonna start twisting and we'll kind of see how it moves like this. So we're gonna just help it wrap around. Okay. Get it into like a bundle, fold it in a little there. Yeah, you got to kind of watch how it would go naturally. Okay, pants are done. You did it. <laughs> that was so hard. Okay, I'm gonna slide the rubber band, and probably just one is good since this is just for holding it and making it easier to transport. Okay, so we've got these ready, and then we're just gonna put the die on. So we've got our black die. We filled it up to the top warm water is good and shake it really well and even sometimes we like to let it sit mm -hmm. sometimes it takes a bit for it to dissolve and you'll get like little like if you don't let it mix long enough you'll get little splashes which i actually love yeah but if you really want it mixed in really well yes okay and all we're gonna do is just squirt this is a fun one because you can be kind of haphazard about yes it. like you with some spirals you need to like be very careful about only squirting in one quadrant right. or whatever but for this style we're just gonna and when you're thinking it. about doing your tie-dye for fall it's all about just the colors that you choose like taking it from your bright colors that you would use in the summertime and then switching them into more muted if there's something that you want to actually you know where or if if it's not for your kids or whatever and you're looking for something a little bit more mature then the color choice you use can really um give you more grown-up results um i'm gonna put gloves on before i flip we really like um what's the name of that kit that we used for that ice dye that was green and that we love while what's it called jackie the peach and plum peach and, and plum. olive what is that one called Jackie will think of it. Wilderness. Jackie. The wilderness kit. How did you do that so fast? The wilderness tulip kit is perfect for fall. It has like a peachy color. It has like an olive green. It has a blush so and a plum. It's gorgeous for fall. So and did you say that's what you used in the uh -huh. ice dye I used sweatshirt? It for the ice dye and it, so thinking about using like a little bit of different colors is really fun to, to grow up your tie dye. 
or just sticking with one color like we did here helps it grow up a little bit too. If you don't have a bunch of colors, um, like the more monochromatic, um, grows it up a little bit. Yeah. Okay. I put gloves on. <laughs> I should have done that at the beginning. And these gloves come in your one step tie dye kits. Yep. And we just flipped it over and we're going to do the same thing with sweatshirts. You got to be prepared with a couple a couple bottles of dye because yes. they're big and they are thick. Yes, they definitely take more dye than a t-shirt would in the summertime. Yes. So we're going through two bottles on this project. Yes. What questions do you have? And what are you guys making right now? What are you going to be working on? Is anyone tie-dyeing for Halloween? We have some some costumes we did for Halloween. We'll show you at the end because we're going to do another class on tie-dye Halloween costumes and it'd be fun if you came. Yeah, they're we're really proud of those. They're really, really fun. Okay, so we've covered it in dye. And now this is seems to be where we get the most questions. Definitely. Is how what you do from here. So there's a couple options. The traditional way of setting your dye is since this isn't a Tupperware, I could just put a lid on this yes. and let it sit. You want to like protect seal it, it from the air. Seal it so that it stays moist. Damp and let it sit for eight to 24 hours, depending on how deep you want the colors to be. You can put them in a giant Ziploc bag, a garbage bag, a grocery bag that you tie up. You can wrap it in saran wrap. Any of those things, you'll get the same result. So you're gonna package them up mm -hmm. some way and let it sit for eight to 24 hours. Yes. Then you're going to rinse it until the water runs clear and then wash it by itself in the laundry and, and dry. dry. And we just wash it by itself the first time. After that, you should be good to throw it in with whatever. Mm -hmm. um, and that's how you would set this and you would be pretty much done. There is a two minute tie dye kit that we love. It's it might not work with sweatsuits because they are a little bulky. They might not fit in the container. Yeah. Um, are they right on top of the shelf in that bucket? They're like little, look kind of like takeout boxes. And you put them, um, put the stuff in there. Here. Okay. So you would put your shirt or whatever in here seal it till it clicks, close it till it clicks, and then put it in the microwave for a couple minutes. If you had a smaller, less thick sweatshirt that fit in here, I would maybe do a little bit more time for a sweatshirt just because it's bigger. And then you can rinse it right after that. This, if you get these, they come with instructions that you can follow, but it really helps impatient people. Like yeah. Us. It's <laughs> awesome. We love to have a tie dye project done from start to finish oh, in an hour. The best feeling. That's great. But with a sweatsuit, this can be a little bit tricky. Yes. So like we said, put it in a bag, let it set for eight to 24 hours. And again, there are instructions in your kit that you yes. can follow. So you don't have to remember this and then rinse till the water's clear wash and dry it. By and yes, itself. Gail, you do use detergent when you wash it in the washing machine, but you don't need to use a special detergent. That's no. something else. It's, I think it's like syn synthrapol, the synthrapol or something like that. It's like a, what is that word? It's like a special detergent for dye oh. projects. Anyway. Yes. You can use the container. You just rinse it out and use it again and again and again. Yep. Yeah. It rinses right off. Okay. So can we put well yeah. rinsed shirt in the washer? Yeah. Yes. Yep. After you've set it for long enough, you really shouldn't have a problem with it bleeding onto the on to each other. Yeah. But if you're making a bunch of, of projects together that are all tie-dye, you can throw them in together. You just don't want to put it in with your normal laundry before it's its own first wash. Yes. Okay. Any other questions on the setting, washing, finishing process here? Okay, so magic of classes. We have our washed and dried suit here. So this one is all done. And these pants out so we can show. Oh, yeah, let's give you a better look at the pants with the little side spiral. Um, okay, yes. 
So this is how the pants, we had done it here and it came out like that. So we've got those done. And now we're gonna add our little pop of color. So this we've already cut holes in, but this sweatsuit didn't come with a tie. So we just cut little holes in here. We can tell that this is open all the way around. And then all you do is get some paracord in the color that you want. Michael's has a lot of fun colors of paracord. Yes, and we love the pink with this. We also got a like a neon Yellow green. green. Yeah, that was so fun. But anyway, okay. So we're gonna take, we cut a length of it if you want to measure it before you can, but this is just a length of it. And we're gonna do a paper clip, mm, safety pin. <laughs> <laughs> a safety pin, we're gonna stick through it. And we're just going to put it in the hole and work it through. So this, the safety pin helps you to like feel it as you're going through. So you're gonna just like scrunch it along. Who can tell us a story while I'm working this through? I this? can. Okay. <laughs> um, okay. I wanted, I was thinking about other sweatsuits that we've made or sweatshirts that we've made in the past. Um, and something that I like about working with sweatsuits, especially if you choose a color, is it automatically mutes the dye results, right? Like if you use a gray over a white or a color like this, this green over um, a white, then you automatically get more muted colors. So like we talked about a little bit before with your color choice, choosing a colored sweatshirt where the dye will still show up, but it mutes the original color a little bit makes it look more mature and more fall-like. Have you tried sprinkling glitter on the spiral of the top? I'm wondering if it would stick permanently. So I this is what I would do for that. I think there was a tulip glitter kit at one point. Jackie, am I wrong? Anyway, if I'm wrong, don't answer anything. <laughs> but if you wanted glitter, oh, there it is. Glitter oh, kit. So you could use that. Icy. Um, another thing you could do is, um, oh gosh, where's our end? Don't panic. Don't panic. Oh, it's like only pulling the middle part. Okay. Anyway, um, something else you could do to add glitter is there's a fabric glue. This is stuck. <laughs> oh, no. This is reality. Okay. We're going to just tie it, it over. I'm going to tie it in a little knot so that it doesn't fray fray that's a good tip um okay so a live tip glitter um another way to add glitter would be to like dye it wash it dry it and then use fabric glue yeah and Aline's, which is a good brand for that kind of thing has fabric glue where you could do like rhinestones mm -hmm. or whatever embellishments you want and they would they would hold on really, really well to that. So Kathy, does that answer your question? I don't think if you just applied it within the dye and then it would wash and dried it, that it would hold. So you'll need some kind of adhesive to, to do that. They all, um, Tulip also has lots of different fabric paints um, that you could try out too that have some glitters in them. Yeah. Oh, there's Aline's fabric perfusion. Okay, let's try this again. Okay. So I tied a knot so that it doesn't tug. I'm going to try this again. So now you have to tell another story. Okay. Luckily, well, Liz is an entertainer. While you're doing it, should I show some projects from the book that yeah. are applicable? Okay. So here is a tie, a sweatsuit or a sweatshirt project that you can find in the book. This is how to achieve pastels with, e with any kind of tie dye. Um, so like if you have red and blue around your house, but you don't want bright red and bright, bright, bright blue, you can add uh, water and then um, change a little bit the way that you rinse it to get these nice like cotton candy pastel. Tulip um, also has, um, a, has lots of pastels. Yeah, they so, do. And then our other project that we love in this book that is sweatsuit is, oh, she shared Tulip Dazzling Glitter Fabric Paint. Perfect. Happy, you are set. You're set, girl. Glitter that stuff. This is our, one of our pride and joy projects. <laughs> this is a sweatsuit project we did where we reverse dyed the black with uh, bleach. We removed it, the color. 
Then in those spots where we applied the bleach, we added the color back in to get this result. So it looked like this before where we removed the color with bleach. And then in those spots, we added color back in. Very cool. And we have a t-shirt uh, version of this that we did for one of my I can see it right there in the closet. Oh, for one of our previous Michaels classes. And you can find it on their YouTube channel. Let me see if I can find it. Oh, it was right there, yeah. Okay, I think I did this. Yay! <laughs> It looked like this when we were finished with it. And it's so awesome when you take the color out and then put it back in the kind of results that you get. And you can, again, this is on Michael's YouTube channel. It was a class we did maybe a month ago. A month or two. Yeah, month or two. Summer. So you should be able to look through Michael's classes on YouTube and find this class too. Cool. Was that Thanks. good? Yeah, you were so good. Okay. Okay, so now that we've got this through, We'll see like how long we want it to be on each side. We'll keep this knotted one. Let's see. Okay, probably like that. Yeah, that's good. And then we'll tie a knot on the other side about the same length. Isn't that so fun? It's fun. I, I want to change out all the strings and all my your sweatshirt. Suit. Yeah. And then we're just going to trim and then we'll trim this side. It really stands out against that it's so <laughs> olive fun. color. It's, really it's awesome. sort of like unexpected color yes. combination too. Yes. Okay, Jackie has shared all the products <laughs> and we'll put those in the email too. So make sure that you've signed up for that. Okay, so let's have you switch to the overhead camera. No, Maria. straight ahead. Or yeah, straight ahead. Sorry, straight ahead. Um, how would we tie up the sweatsuit sweatshirt we were supposed to do? Okay, good question. So what she's referencing, that was from Lorianne. So Lorianne is asking, so when you, when you registered for this class, there was an image on the class that was used as kind of like a, a, a placeholder um, because we plan these classes way in advance and then we don't have the pictures until just before. So I'm sorry if that came, if you came here, uh, and are confused about what we made today, that project is on our blog, prettylifegirls.com. Um, we can, we're also going to send out a link to that project um, in our follow-up email. So um, if you scroll up just a little bit, you'll see a Flowdesk link. You can put your email in and we'll send it to you. Um, all that sweatshirt was, it was a white cotton sweatshirt bunched up. We put ice all over the top and then we just shook our dye on top of it. Then once all of the dye had come through the ice cubes, we rinsed and set it just like we taught you to do here and washed and dried it. And that was the result. All of those steps are on our blog, prettylifegirls.com. So you can so you can see exactly how to do that. We have tons of ice dye projects on our blog too, if it's your first time. Um, so it's a very easy application that sets similar to the one that we showed you today. Okay, but Lori Ann, Lori Ann, just to show you, sorry, Maria, can we go back overhead for this? <laughs> sorry. Um, for the ice dye, thank you. Um, you just would lay out your shirt, your sweatshirt, whatever. You want the front facing up. Yes. And then all you're gonna do is you're just gonna bunch it up like this. It literally is the easiest ever. You just bunch it up. And if you want it, I mean, if it's damp, it will hold together. This mm -hmm. is a dry shirt I just grabbed. If it's damp, it will hold together a little more, or you can put a rubber band or two around it to hold it into a bundle. Or sometimes you use like a paper or cardboard ring for ice dye to hold the ice on top. But that's it. You just go like that um, and then put ice and then die. Lorianne, what link are you talking about that you She's went? saying in the post that it didn't show them just this. Oh, part. just that part. Okay. Yeah. Got it. Got it. Got it. Got it. Okay. Lara, will you add that email in our flow desk link? Um, Jackie, would you drop it in there? Sorry. Okay. <laughs> okay. So any questions? Are we on forward facing now? Yes. Okay. Maria's <laughs> Maria's Thanks, got Maria. Yeah. Okay. Jackie just dropped our flow desk link there. Put your email and name in there so that you can get our follow-up email with all the information, the link to the iStyle project, the video for the sweatsuit we made today, 
and to be entered into a giveaway for an amazing tie-dye prize pack. Um, I wanted to talk about reverse dye for Kathy, but before we do that, does anyone have questions about the ice dye sweatshirt or our spiral black and white sweatshirt? You bring it over. Black and white, you say? Uh, what did I say? You said black and white. Black and olive. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Perfect. So, like Liz mentioned when she showed this sweatsuit, reverse dye is something that you can do. And not everyone knows that. So, you can take color out of certain fabrics. Again, you got to pay attention to the oh Kathy wants to see the pants again okay yes. let me hold them up <laughs> so you can see this is the middle of the spiral right here and how it comes out like that and you can see why you maybe wouldn't want to do that <laughs> right bullseye. in the center <laughs> yeah, yeah bullseye <laughs> so that's why we chose to do it over mm. here cute huh yeah it's a really cute set look store-bought yeah it does all right Let's cover these questions and then we'll go back to the reverse. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks Thank so you guys. Can't wait. Is the I stay method easier than the method used today? Mm, I wouldn't say one's easier or no, harder. It's just different application. And, and um, you need a bunch of ice. Yeah. So different supplies. Yes. But we love ice dye. It's probably our favorite. It yeah. kind of gives you a watercolor finish like watercolor effect so 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 pretty you have very little control over what happens at the end so it's a fun surprise yeah because um the colors mix and that's the fun part yes. about it so okay reverse dye you're talking about the fabric for reverse, reverse dye. dye so with reverse dye you use bleach to take color out and it only will take color out of the natural fibers. So a 100% cotton shirt, you'll get good results. You want to be careful about um, letting bleach sit on that for too long because it can eat it away and have and you'll get holes and everything. Um, a 60-40 blend is good. We recommend a Heather shirt because where'd that t-shirt go? Here. So like on this one, this is a charcoal gray shirt. And because it has the speckles, that means it has like a lighter base color. So when you reverse dye a charcoal heather, you get almost pure white. So that's what it looked like after we bleached. You get almost a pure white, which means your colors will be more vibrant. So um, that's what we recommend is a heather these canvas or Bella canvas, I think are, let's see, they are 52% cotton, 48% polyester. So what that means is when you put the bleach on, it's only taking color off of the cotton. You still have 48% polyester to keep this shirt well intact. Yes. And the wider you can get those lines, the brighter your results will be. So in, on, in comparison, so this is a Halloween costume that we've just finished up. It's going to be in our premium Halloween costume class um, on what day? October 6th. October 6th. So this was done on a 100% cotton shirt from without any um, and it's heather. Black. And pure it's black. black, pure black. We couldn't get it quite as light. So when you hold that up in comparison, we hold it up. You can see how bright those colors are versus this. These, you can still see them and they still look awesome. We're really happy with how they turned out, but nothing compares to how the Heather turns out because you can get it so much whiter. Also, isn't that cute? <laughs> it's so cute. It's, it's a, a solar it's system. The solar system and we used the galaxy reversed. We took out the bleach and then we put the color back in. So you'll have to join that class because this is a very fun cost. Very fun. So yeah, you just use bleach. We do a one-to-one -one ratio of water and bleach. You spray it on there. We'll send, we can send out a, a reverse dye tutorial in the email. Is yeah. that helpful? Does anyone have questions about that? It's kind of like a side note, yeah. class, like mini class. Yeah, 
Reverse die 101. Okay, so Liz mentioned that we have an upcoming class on October 6th. It's a premium class. That means it will be closer to 90 minutes. We're showing how to make three tie-dye Halloween costumes, the solar system one. We're going to do an artist and a butterfly, some butterfly wings. And they're so It's cute. really, really cute. Do you want to do a sneak peek of the wings? The, oh yeah, they're right under you. The artist. Am I blind? Oh, did I move it? Show the artist all look. Okay, so we made this artist apron, which is so cute. And look at this trick or treat box. That's the paint palette, and we use tulip puff paint. Is that so cute? We put the candy in there. And then this is the last one we'll share on that day. These are the butterfly wings. What's the name of this method? Spider. This is the spider method where you get the color and the black. And we just made this out of a large t-shirt from Michael's. And then we hooked little Elastic. elastics to it to so your little one can put them on. And then we'll also show you how to make this butterfly headband to go with it. So that's going to be on October 6th. It's a premium class. We'll teach you how to do all three methods. Um, super easy and a great way to um, knock out a bunch of Halloween costumes. Yeah. We'll send really the registration simple. link for that in our follow-up too. Um, Nancy, oh, sorry. Does anything dye polyester or rayon? There are dyes dedicated to synthetics. So you just want to look at those. Yeah. Um, any last questions before we set you free? <laughs> Thank you so much for joining. It's so fun having all of you and follow us on social media at Pretty Life Girls and share your projects that you make. We'd love to see them. And you can also find links on our social accounts to our blog and our shop and all the projects that we make. We have tons of reels that are tie-dye projects that you can um, look through and then make sure that you're following um, my, the hashtag Michael's classes and sharing anything there also. Uh, make sure you're following at Tulip Color, Tulip Color Crafts and at Michael's stores. Um, and this will be uploaded uh, in a couple of days. So if you missed anything, you can watch it back. And we, make sure you're signed up again for that follow-up email. Um, Maybell, I saw you still have lots of questions. You just reply to that email and we'll answer yes. whatever questions you have. Absolutely. Can you use any class? I'm not understanding. <laughs> My brain's not computing. Okay, Jackie just dropped the email sign up link. So make sure you're signed up there so that you can get in touch with us with any questions you have. We are here. Um, let's see. Okay, great. Thanks, you guys. Oh, so can you use clothes for any class? I, I'm so sorry. I am. Oh, I'm wondering if she's asking, can you use any kind of clothes for the tie dye classes or for, for our next class? Sorry. I don't know what you're asking. I'm trying to. I know. Can you, can you Maybell, send us an email. We'll help you. Yeah. You can just email us right now. Hello at prettylifegirls.com or you can DM us on Instagram at prettylifegirls. We want to help. And we're tired. We're moms. <laughs> <laughs> and we're just like, like I used to be so smart and it's just not firing like it used to. Okay. <laughs> Thank you guys. Good luck with your projects. We'll see you really soon. Bye. Bye.